Hello and welcome to another segment of the East Brunswick Advisory Health Council's Wellness Spotlight. The weather's getting warmer and the grass is starting to turn green and with the days getting longer, it's time to do things outside. Many people these days, either because of the green movement or because they're interested in ways to be able to exercise and get oxygen into their body, they're looking forward to biking. So I thought it was time for us to go down to one of the best places in town to be able to learn about the benefits of cycling and a lot of the different products that are available for people who either want to learn how to ride a bike or people who are experienced cyclists who want to be able to get the latest gear. We're here at Planet Bike in the old Movie City 5 shopping center right down by Brothers Pizza and Shogun. And I'm here with Joe who is the Planet Bike manager. How you doing? Welcome to the Wellness Spotlight, Joe. Thank you. Nice to be here. So Joe, uh, tell us a little bit about Planet Bike. Well, we're here to help the customers, uh, the, the community, with uh, bicycling needs. Uh, we're here for everybody in the family. We can give you from child bike all the way to an advanced road bike. Uh, with everything in between from comfort bikes to uh, mountain bikes. Uh, we cover the full gambit. We do repairs, we do parts, everything. We have the uh, accessories to go with the bikes. Uh, we can 100% cover you as far as your bicycle needs. And how long has Planet Bike been in town? Approximately 20 years. Now, originally, I know you were located uh, in that little strip right in front of the Brunswick Square Mall, right by Macy's. Correct. And now you've relocated over by the Movie City Five, the old Movie City Five shopping center yes. here. And how long have you been at this location? Just about a year now. The store is absolutely beautiful. I see Thank you, you have a lot of different bikes here. Yeah, we try to keep everything so everybody's, you know, all, uh, every customer is satisfied when they come out of here. Talk a little bit about some of the different bikes that you offer. If somebody's interested in getting a new bike for their kids, okay, what are some of the things that people need to think about? Uh, well, you need to know where you're going to be riding, uh, what, their, what your child's cycling skills are. Um, if they're new, uh, you, we uh, offer bicycles with training wheels. We also offer a few riding tips for people to get their children to ride without training wheels. So we kind of cover that as uh, well as, you know, giving them the service that they require to get the bicycle that they need. And what are some of the features that people should look for in a bike like that for, an, for a, a first bike for a child? Uh, again, it depends on um, what their skill is. I mean, every child has a different skill as far as even being able to get on a bicycle. Some children don't require training wheels right off the bat. They have a, an inner sense of balance. Uh, some children require the train wheels, which is not a bad thing. Uh, we set them up and the kid rides along and they, they ride as much as they can with the train wheels until they realize they, they don't need them any longer. Um, we also sell older ch children's bicycles with, uh, you know, which with the children when they're already advanced enough to ride a bicycle with brakes and uh, handbrakes and gears, we sell those as well. Then we move into BMX territory. Now, when a, when a parent comes in with a child, you obviously you have to check that child and fit the child to Correct. the bike. Yes. What are some of the things that parents have to take into consideration when they're fitting a bike to a child? How tall the child is, how far the reach from the seat to the handlebar is. They don't want to have the child choked up onto the handlebar and they don't want to be stretched too far because if they're stretched too far they're going to feel uncomfortable and maybe not want to ride the bicycle. If you're crushed up you're going to be coming up with your knees and hitting your arms so Proper fit is key. It could make the child want to ride a bike and it could make the child not want to ride a bike. So we try to set them on the, as many possible choices as we can to get the bike that fits them the best. Now with, uh, with, with a child riding a bike, I know that there are laws now Correct. that require children to wear protective gear. Can you talk a little bit about that please, Joe? Well, New Jersey state law states that un children under the age of 17 years old must wear a helmet while they're bicycling, while they're uh, scootering, or uh, while they're skateboarding or skating for that matter. Now these helmets are really very different from some of the first helmets that came oh, out. Oh yes, yes. Let's talk about that for a minute. What are some of the things that parents need to take into consideration when purchasing a helmet? And I see they're all different prices. Correct. So can you talk about some of the differences in the helmets? First, the, 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 price, the price range has nothing to do with safety rating. The safety rating on the least expensive helmets and the most expensive helmets are the same. It's all rated by the same company uh, for the same kind of so safety. So they all meet the same safety standards. They all standards. meet the same safety standards. The proper fit is key to having the helmet 
work properly. If the helmet does not fit their head properly, it's not going to stay on their head if they do have an accident. If it moves a little bit when it's on their head, it's not going to stay protecting them. Uh, the helmet has to fit on the head over the top of the forehead and our helmets all have retention systems built in that dial the uh, Oh look at that, so it can tighten the it band? It tightens down on the back of the head and this is what actually keeps the helmet on not the strap, so you don't have to have the strap choking against the bottom of your chin you can have the two finger rule and still have this helmet stay on your head very well And uh, I see all these uh, openings in The here. vents on the top are for air cooling because uh, during the summertime months when you're riding your bike the most, when it's warm out, putting a helmet on your head is going to make it even warmer. The vents are designed to channel air through to keep your head cool so you don't get overheated while you're riding your bicycle because, again, then you're uncomfortable, you don't want to ride. So as long as you're getting a helmet, is it just a matter of, I mean, what are some of the features that make the difference between a helmet that's, say, $50 and one that's twice that price? As you go up in the price ranges, um, helmets get lighter weight and more venting. The venting also gets a little more uh, positioned better for better air channeling. Uh, you're getting more venting in the more expensive helmets and again lighter weight, but again the same safety standards as the rest of them. Now, do you also sell pads that uh, kids we, can wear? We can get elbow pads and knee pads. I don't have them in stock. Wrist guards, wrist too? guards. They come. They uh, they can usually come as a set. You know, you get the wrist guard, the knee, uh, the elbow guards, and the knee pads all in one kit, which is a good idea for your unexperienced child to have if you don't want them to get hurt. Yeah, definitely. And as well as a helmet. Do you sell? Uh, we do sell gloves. You do? Yes. So uh, for all. All size people, uh, from ch children all the way to extra, extra large, big hand people. Are there wrist guards for adults too? You can get wrist guards for adults as well. Yes, yeah. so you can get elbow guards. You can get full body armor. Uh huh. So yeah, it's all available. What about adults that never learned how to ride a bike, but they're interested in getting out? Uh, well, where there would are, they go to learn? Your best bet would be probably a, a ball field, some place with grass, where you can, you know, if you do fall, you're not going to get as hurt. So you can, you know, because it's Something all about that. a balance. So most adults already have that sense of balance again because you're, you've are you been running around and everything else for a while. And you just go into a grass field and just start out slow. And, you know, have, have somebody maybe run alongside of you and hold you up a little bit. And it's just a way to, you, you just got to have confidence in yourself. And keep pedaling. And keep pedaling. <laughs> but you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to know in yourself that you can do it. Because... It's, it's all about that. We even tell the children that. You know, you, you know you could do it. You just have to get it out. And they eventually just, all right, and they do it. I know. It's a, it's a real rite of passage for a child yeah, to be able to learn how is. to ride a bike when you see that sense of accomplishment And when they in come face. in and buy the bike and they walk out the door with a bike with training wheels on it, and then the next time they come in the store and they're riding without training wheels, and they come in and they say, well, thank you very much for that, that's a very uh, rewarding feeling. You know, you come in and you have a child that just learned how to ride a bike come in and thank you for the tips that you gave them. It's like, whew, you know, wow, that's really cool. Joe, I see from looking at some of the bikes that you have out here on display that they have new components and, and they're built very differently than the bikes that we rode when we were kids. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them allow for a rider to be able to ride a bike with less shock. Correct. to their body mm -hmm. uh, so their joints aren't being pounded as much even if they're not riding on the street. Let's take a look at some of these bikes and you can show us some of the latest uh, changes. Sure. Let's look at this one here. All right. Now I know bikes are a lot lighter than they were years ago. Yes sir, they certainly are. This one, uh, I, I was looking at it, it looks like it was going to be very heavy but uh, actually it's, it's very light. Probably about 32 pounds. Whereas, That's all. Now, what kind of bike is this? Years ago, a bike, a bike like this would have probably weighed in the area for 45 pounds. This is a Giant Trance uh, Giant X is model. a brand name. Giant is the brand. Trance is the model. It's an X, X4. It has five inches of air sprung suspension. It has hydraulic. Now, wait a minute. Oh. What's air sprung suspension? You have front and rear suspension on the bicycle nowadays. This is uh, for going cross-country mountain bike riding. Cross, so in other words, you're not on the street, not on the you're street in the woods. You're in the woods, straight up in the woods, through the trails, between there's the trees. There's big rocks, there's tree stumps. Tree stumps, rocks, roots. You're riding over them. Logs. <laughs> and, over so, them. and so there's shock absorption built up. into the frame to take it up, so yep. you don't over this. Exactly. You're not like that. Exactly, it gives, you, it gives the rider a lot more control. 
It uh, also gives the rider a lot more choices where he gets to ride, he or she gets to ride. Um, and you're out in the woods, you're out in nature. Yes. Oh yeah, you're out there. You're having a good time in the woods with all your buddies. And and, and these, these this bike here has a lot of gears. Correct. It has um, nine speeds in the back and three speeds in the front. The 27 speeds. Yeah, overall, yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of crossover gearing, so they, they don't call it like that. But uh, the gearing in the back, it allows you, the, the gearing allows you to be able to climb or descend multiple types of trails. So the bike enables you to be able to, um, to, to, to pedal uh, a very in a steep way incline. that doesn't tax your body exactly. too, too hard. Exactly, with the amount of gearing choices that you get with these bicycles these days, you don't have to kill yourself to do what you used to have to do years ago. Uh -huh. So you get a, a much more controlled, a much more comfortable, much more enjoyable ride out of a bicycle these days than you would have 15 years ago. Now I see these tires are huge yeah. and they're very nubby. Uh, that's obviously to uh, okay, to control you off, off the uh, off the road positioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any you know trail stuff that you might run into, it'll grip and roll over it without having to slip out from under you. Now, where would somebody ride a bike like this? Uh, I guess around here you could ride it the nearest, uh, in the, the nearest, park by uh, Farrington Lake, you know. The you nearest place here would be like Frost Woods. Frost Woods. Um, Cheesequake Woods are not far from here in the Old Bridge area. Um, New Brunswick area has a place, it's called Six Mile Run. Uh, they're all within, well, Frost Woods is only right around the corner pretty much. Uh, Cheesequake is only 15, 20 minutes from here. and. Uh, Six mile run is only maybe half an hour from here tops. That's terrific. So within a half an hour, you got three choices to go. And then within an hour's ride, there are a whole list of places you can ride. I see uh, these bikes have reflectors built yes. in on the back front, pedals. New Jersey state law states that you have to have a reflector on a bicycle before it leaves a bicycle shop. What you do after that is up to you, but they have to be there. Mountain biker, road biker, uh, comfort bike, they're all reflectorized. Now I see that different bikes have different kinds of bike seats. Correct. You know with the uh, with the racing bikes, the road bikes, you know that seat feels kind of like you're sitting on an axe head. They're, they're built for speed, uh, not for comfort as much. Uh, you're going to want to be able to have light weight rather than heaviness. So on a road bike they're going to be very uh, small amount of padding, uh, very lightweight materials and limited amount of material at all so yeah. they're you know they so they're lighter okay so this is a cross-country mountain bike let's go look at a road bike okay which is very different from what we're looking at over here yes sir this is your road bike it's a beautiful trek yes sir. road bike and I can see some things automatically that are very different you know you have the thin narrow seat but look at these tires Yes, built for speed. Again, they are so they're very aerodynamic, very, narrow, very aerodynamic, high pressure tires. So they roll very fast. The skinnier, the higher pressure is uh, less rolling resistance, which means greater speed. And uh, what's the weight on a bike like this? If that's about thirty pounds, what's this one go for, Joe? Twenty-two. Twenty-two pounds. Twenty-two, twenty-four pounds tops. Twenty-two, uh -huh. I would guess, though. Now, why would somebody buy a bike like this? If they want to do long distance riding, uh, if they want to go fast, um, that's the best way to go. Long distance riding is a, the best way to go as a road bike because it goes the fastest to get you there the best. And it's called a road bike, obviously, because you're not riding this you're in the not, woods. Nothing, no, nothing but road. Uh, the smoother, the better. Uh, Henry Hudson Trail, that's paved. You can ride that on there. Mm -hmm. There are some bike paths that you can ride on that are paved, but nothing that's not paved. Okay. and. Now, this looks like a nice, comfortable cruiser over here. Yes, sir. That is uh, what they call a fitness comfort bike. This is made by a company called Giant. Correct. Joe, who would buy a bike like this cruiser? A person that would buy this would be a person that wants to be comfortable in an upright seating position, but wants to get a little bit of speed as well. Uh, as you see, it has a suspension seat post on it with this big cushy seat, so it's comfortable. So this seat post, it, that actually has a shock absorber yes, built does. into it too, so if you hit a bump, 
it, the seat goes up and down. Yes, it does. And it gives you uh, less uh, road vi uh, vibration on your lower back area. And the front fork the front also fork has shock absorption. Takes away from your shoulder getting beat down by the road vibrations. And you mentioned something that's important too. On a road bike with the handlebars that look like a ram's horn. Correct. You know, your, your riding position is more forward you're aerodynamic, more down, but forward you're curved aerodynamic. over. With Whereas something like this, you're much more upright. You're upright, yes. Now, the, the, you know, and the seat, look at this seat. This looks very comfortable. Very comfortable, nice wide, with cushiony, so it's built for comfort. So, you know, the person that's going to be riding this is going to be comfortable, and they're going to be able to get a decent amount of speed as well. Because, again, the, tar the tires are kind of narrow, so they have less rolling resistance. Now, are these bikes specific to men or women, or can either sex ride any of these Bi bikes? Bicycles nowadays are kind of uh, more like unisex. Like, uh, unisex. Uh, there are women-specific designs that are designed for a woman who is built taller in the leg and shorter in the torso. Um, closer, the handlebars are a little narrower on a woman-specific design. The seats are cut specifically for a woman, so there are women specific, but really the men's bikes are unisex. And you have both here? Yes. Okay, and um, you know, a bike like this, which has a, a fatter tire than the road bike, right. but a narrower tire than the all-terrain, this one, I guess, gives you the best of all worlds, A little right? bit of more versatility, because you can take this into a, like a crushed gravel path, such as the DNR Canal Trail. Um, it'll be it'll fare well in that stuff, uh, or the Manasquan Reservoir Trail, where you like to bike. Um, it'll take that as well. So it's give you a little more versatility than a road bike and a lot more comfort. If somebody wanted to buy a bike because they wanted to save on gas and they didn't want to pollute the environment and they could pick any one, which one would you think would be about the best one to ride? Well, I would have to have a, an idea of where they're going to be riding. Let's say they're riding from their condo to their office building. Uh, Primarily road? Road, yeah. Well, you would, you have a, a you could get something like this. Um, you can get a dual sport model, which will be off road as well as on the road, mm -hmm. with a with semi wide tire, uh, with the ruggedness of a mountain bike, but with the a little bit of a more of agility of a road bike. So it gets a little bit more speed than something like this is because you're not straight up in the air again. You're a little bit more hunched over, but not again like the road bike. You're not like hunched over true. Now, I, I couldn't help but overhear one of the other customers who just came in before the taping was looking for a bike that folded up. A lot of Correct. people looking for folding bikes because they have smaller cars and they live in apartments Apartment. that, that it makes it difficult to, get up to be able to put a big bike in a closet or get up and down the steps or on and off a bus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they And you, you offer these folding bikes also, yes. too, yes? Gi Giant makes a bicycle called an Expressway, and it is a folding bike. They have um, two models available and they are folding bikes. They are 20 inch wheels with a small size frame, very lightweight, designed to fold up into a pouch so that you can cover, carry it onto a train, carry it into your office building, um, carry it into your apartment, much easier than a full size bicycle would be able to, um, and a lot lighter. Again, more versatility because you can fold it, you can bring it with you. So on a train, if you're commuting with it, it's great. Um, they're becoming more popular because of that. More and more people, because like you said, are trying to become green and they want to be able to save the environment a little bit better. So it makes it easier to do that with a folding bicycle. If somebody's thinking of starting up riding again, because I know there's a few riding clubs in town, right. what are some of the things that you recommend people do before they start getting into the season for riding? Uh, if you have a bicycle already, have it tuned up. Uh, so it's nice and everything is adjusted properly so you get a nice, you know, good start for the season. Um, the brakes, yeah, the gearing. Yeah, the gearing, the brakes, everything. You know, your drivetrain is good. You want to make sure your uh, gearing, your braking is all up to par and it's going to be safe for you to ride. You don't want to have any problems while you, you know, if it's been sitting around for a little while and you haven't ridden it, you don't know if anything has happened to it while it's been sitting there. Maybe somebody knocked it over, knocked an adjustment out and you're riding and all of a sudden you find out you can't shift your gears. So you want to be able to do that. You you, you want to keep it maintained properly. You check the tire before, pressure. Check the tire pressure. That's a thing that you should do normally on a regular basis, every once a week or once every week and a half or two weeks, because tire pressure will diminish slowly over time. As far as a person's body goes, are there special stretches that a person can do? You know, is there a special diet that they should eat? 
you know, before they go on a big ride. You know, some of the guys that I know, you know, well, on a Sunday morning, they'll do a 25-mile ride. Uh, do you recommend any warm-up activities or any a, dietary activities a, a to help good stretch, them? A good stretching is always good. I mean, it always warms up the muscles before you go out and, and, and start working them out, and this way you don't hurt yourself. You don't strain your muscles that way. They, they get a little blood pumping in them first if you stretch. So a good stretching regimen is advisable. Some people are lazy and don't do it. Um, and, and you have exercises and stretches here that your customers can get, they can pick up at the desk when they come in and sure, uh, they can, can be provided with those. We can, give you, we can give you an itinerary of some type of stretching that you can do and some type of exercises you can get into before you do it. And as you mentioned, diet as well. Uh, if you're going out to do a long ride, you don't want to have a whole tremendous a lot of food in your belly. So you want to eat lightweight food, something that's going to give you good energy but uh, sustain energy. Um, good carbs, protein, uh, but you don't want to eat a lot. So you don't want to weigh yourself down with a with a big meal, and then go and try to do a, big, a lot of mileage. And the key is to stay hydrated. I know a lot yes. of your bikes have baskets to be able to yes. put water you bottles put your water on. Bottle, you always have a water bottle cage, and a lot of mountain bikers actually use what they call Camelback or hydro, hydro packs, which is like a backpack that has a two or three liter uh, pouch inside of it where you fill with water and. It, much easier than it has a straw that comes down and you put it in your mouth. It's much easier than having a water bottle. So mountain bikers use it because you're in the woods. You can't take your hand off the handlebar. And you have them here. Oh yeah, we have them there right behind you. Hydro packs, they're called. Great. Uh, and all uh, different kinds of different water bottles and insul insulated water bottles, different colored water bottle cages. You got it covered. That's terrific. Now, um, in, in addition to the bikes, energy food. I see you also offer a person the ability to be able to train on their bike yes. during the off season. Yes, so when sir. it's snowing or raining, yes, sir. talk about that. Well, a personal trainer in your house is always a, a good thing to have if you want to keep fit during the wintertime months, like you just mentioned, or on a rainy day during even the summertime. Okay, I'm going to move this bike oh, out of great. the way so we can get a better view of Excellent. it. Excellent. This, this particular model is a magnetic trainer. What that is is, is a, magnetic, a magnetic piece inside here which has a... Um, which is the resistance levels. Uh, there's a remote level uh, over here on the handlebar for you to change the resistance levels of uh, in the in the drum there, and it allows you to uh, have different uh, different pedaling uh, environments in the same area. You could sit in front of your TV and watch TV and pedal and get your mileage and keep your physical fitness up on the, in the bad months. So Joe, in addition to all the bikes that you offer, I see you also have a lot of great accessories. Yeah, we covered a lot of and the accessories and, as well. Uh, and, and things to go along with biking. Now, sure. why would somebody need to buy clothing for riding a bike? Well, if you're going to be doing long distances or anything like that, you should you want to be comfortable. Uh, riding shorts, for instance, have padding in them. So, so when you're you can buy shorts? that have a padding built into the seat of the short? Sure. It's, uh, some of them are gel, some of them are just padding, but it, it, it pads the seat so that when you're on it for a long distance, uh, it doesn't bother you as much. Um, we also have jackets and, and cycling jerseys that offer uh, breathability so that the perspiration gets pulled away from your body and uh, dry down so you don't come back from your bike ride overheated and soaking wet. And, and it breaks the wind so you don't and get chilled. Exactly. Has, we have windbreakers, all that uh, rain gear, shoes, cycling shoes, even for spin classes we have cycling shoes for spin class. So if you're not into getting out on your bicycle and you're going to the gym, we still can help you out. Now I see you also have a couple of pieces here that yes. uh, enable parents to be able to take their kids with them. Yes, sir. Not everybody can afford a babysitter Correct. just to be able to go out and ride a bike. Correct. So you give people the ability to be able to take their children, children with them. Children with them on the ride. So this is... Uh, that is a, tri a baby seat which mounts on a rack that mounts on your bike. So this goes on the rear of the bike. This will mount on the <laughs> rear of the bicycle and will allow your child to sit and three-point three, three point harness so the child's safe. You have a handlebar here to have the child hold on to. It's padded. It's padded. I, it I saw this, the, the little shock, shock absorbers, absorbers built in to into the allow back. the child to so when you take be a bump, comfortable. Yeah. And, uh, and also this fully raise, adjusts. raisable foot pegs so if the child has shorter legs, you can raise this up and still have their foot safely in the foot peg. That's great. And that's, one, that's one way of bringing your children around and this is the other way. That's a bicycle trailer. You it's called a Peapod? A Peapod made by Giant. It is a trailer for your bicycle or a stroller. 
So it hitches to it the hitches back of the bike? It hitches to your bicycle via this mechanism right here, and you pull it along behind you. And they make these for uh, one They make or a single child. This one, this particular model is a single person, a single child, and then you also make a double child as well. And you have two children sitting side by side. That's very fat. plus very somebody nice gets a little to, more resistance when uh, yep. when they're riding, so exactly, they get a better workout. Exactly, because they're a little bit more weight behind them. But they are designed to roll pretty easily, so you could put your child in there, and not, you know you're not going to have a problem riding around with them. And this flap comes down that so flap they don't get hit with and, road dust. If, exactly, or if it's raining. Joe, what does it cost to buy a bike here? Uh, what's the range? Range starts at around for an adult bicycle starts at around three twenty nine, and can go to the thousands. It depends on what your what your bicycling needs are. You know, if you're going to be a racer, you want something really lightweight and fast. It's going to cost you. But if you're a recreational rider, we can set you up with a really nice bike for under four hundred dollars. But okay, so you offer uh, you know all ranges. All ranges of bicycle, par uh, you know, uh, from children's bicycles starting at one hundred and sixty nine dollars, all the way to like I said, an adult bicycle going into the thousands. And what's a warranty on a bike if somebody um, buys a bike? Our from you? Giant and Trek both offer lifetime warranties on their frame and the fork. Um, the component levels come for with a one year warranty. So. Any issues at all, though, you just bring your bicycle back here, and we handle that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. There's no no uh, stress on your end. It's all from us. Joe, thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having Anytime. us. Anytime. Anytime. I'm glad to be here. This concludes another segment of the East Brunswick Advisory Health Council's Wellness Spotlight. I'm Dr. Ken Friedman, President of the East Brunswick Advisory Health Council, with Joe at Planet Bike Cycling Away, reminding you that wellness works when you work it.